27% basically get this wake-up call. They start thinking about solutions. They start thinking about what they have to change in their life. They, have to, they are thinking about getting rid of the energy drainers, the negative people in their lives, the people that do not support them or the healing process. People that when you talk to them on the phone and you hang up, you feel completely exhausted. I call them mm. energy vampires. Yeah, and there are many out there. Oh, yeah, there are many out there. And uh, people need to get rid of these, and uh, uh, they have to make a list of people that really need to be eliminated out of their lives if they want to survive cancer. But very often, it is really the job, George, that keeps them that kills them in the whole meaning of the word. We have the main heart attacks, deadly heart attacks, Monday morning between 8 and 9, when people get ready to a work week that they cannot handle anymore. That's go- interesting. I've always wanted to ask you or somebody that. Why are most of the heart attacks in the morning then? That is because people get into a day or into a work week that they cannot handle anymore. They are afraid of their boss, they are afraid of their, their co-workers, they are afraid of not being able to, to uh, perform. The salespeople have this very often. Stress. Stress. It is all stress. Stress is the only cause of cancer. There is, uh, 14% is, is uh, based on, on diet and uh, accidents like radiation, toxemia, I mean the poisoning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and other factors, but it's only 14%, George, because it's proven, it's a proven fact that 86% of all illness is caused or related to stress, mental and emotional stress. The Stanford University conducted a study and even said, it came to the conclusion that 95% of all illness is stress-related. Wow. And is this stress built up over time, or is it a short-term thing that can get you? It can be both. It, usually it's built up over time. It's hanging on to a really horrible relationship that you know it's wrong, but you hang in because of the children or what the relatives will say or the neighbors would say. This is the main cause in, in my experience was working with over 35,000 cancer patients. And let me say here, there's two independent con- studies conducted that came to the conclusion that I have a cancer cure rate of 92.3%. And I can prove this again and again and again because the only patients I ever lost were the patients that have been damaged by the medical profession too much when they came finally to me. So they have been damaged too much before they came to me and I could not get rid of the damage caused by the medical profession. But I never ever lost a patient that came to me uh, uh, fully functioning, mentally fully functioning uh, that had not had uh, medical treatment before that died. Not one single one. It, it, the, the same uh, is true for, for people with muscular dystrophy or Parkinson's disease. Alzheimer's, for example, is the easiest thing to cure and so on. But we don't want to uh, digress too much. It is really, really important that we have hope, that we have uh, belief in our future, in our healing, in our self-healing, because the medical profession is using fear to, to push you, pressure you into the treatment that will kill you. The last 15 years, George, nobody died of cancer. Everybody died of the side effects of the treatment. It's, for, for example, prostate cancer. You couldn't even die of prostate cancer if you tried. You can't. It's impossible. But people die of prostate cancer because of the treatment. They die from chemotherapy and radiation or from surgery. Surgery usually spreads the the cancer throughout the entire system. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, you have a very aggressive or fast-growing cancer. No, they made it very aggressive and fast-growing. I've always thought that when they cut somebody open, um, they seem to always come down with a bigger cancer spread. Let's talk about that too, Leonard, when we come right back. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you with Dr. Leonard Coldwell as we talk about cancer. Why is it, it seems to me, doctor, that when someone goes in for an operation, a cancer operation, they seem to open them up and it seems like cancer just spreads like crazy. Is it because, you know, the air, the oxygen has hit it or, or why? Uh, there is two reasons. First of all, we always need to come back to the point, the root cause 
of all illness, the root cause of uh, physical root cause of illness or cancer is lack of energy. Now imagine, George, you are you are a researcher. For you, it's really really easy to follow. You have cancer. I mean, not you as a person. A person has cancer because mm-hmm. of lack of energy. The person is worn out, burned out, and now developed. Uh, the body does not have the possibility anymore to fight back and eliminate these mutated and atrophied cells. They accumulate. They they create toxic material. Um, because of lack of energy. Now, what happens now is people get into surgery. They get anesthesia, which means they are going to be killed to the point that they barely survive. That's what anesthesia is. You're going to be poisoned to the point where they keep you alive. That's why people die uh, from anesthesia sometimes because they just let them tip over a little bit too far. So now in a situation where you have no energy to begin with, your energy level is down, you get all this medication, and now the body gets massive trauma. It gets the surgery. And on top of it, every cancer or cancerous growth is toxic. Now, usually they cut into it one way or the other. It's like with mammography or biopsies. If, If a woman has... Uh, a lymph node that is basically cancerous. That means it's extremely toxic material in a lymph node. Now, if these poor women go and have a mammography which puts 50 pounds of pressure on the most sensitive tissue of the female body, the most gland-loaded part of the human body, the female body, the breast, they put 50 pounds of pressure on it. Now imagine this lymph node is now swollen, it's infected, it's inflamed, and they put this pressure on. Usually they burst it, and that caused basically the the breast cancer or the fast-growing cancer. Or they do a biopsy, it's the same like a surgery, they pinch into it, and because they open it up, it's like a bubble that's under pressure. Mm -hmm. The toxins shoot into the system and poison the entire poor human being. And surgery is even worse. It's the anesthesia, it's the poison that kills you partially for, to be ready to, for the surgery. Then you get the physical trauma. You get cut, you get sliced open, you get damaged. And then the drugs and medication and painkillers they gave you after the surgery. Now, an illness, a condition that is caused by lack of energy is now... I mean, multiplied by thousands and thousands of percent uh, with with more lack of energy. That means there is no other way than for the cancer to shoot out and spread out into the entire system. If people ever survive surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, they survive in spite of it, not because of it. And Mm. I am absolutely sure not one single person that ever survived chemo, radiation, or surgery really had cancer. It, there is, is an absolute fact that close to 50% of all cancer positives are false. So 50% of all women that has their breasts sliced off, slaughtered off, did not even have cancer at the first place. But they will not tell you that because of the ramifications of getting sued and so on. So the people will never really find out. But we know from laboratory reports that people later find out. Uh, it, in, it, uh, I think with Susan Summers, it was the same issue that they had the false positive. And she had treatment and so on, as far as I remember. And, and then they figured out it was a false positive. They're even saying nowadays for women to slow down on their mammographies, aren't they? Of course. George, you and I, every, every, every listener knows that radiation causes cancer. So how can, every time a a, a woman gets a mammography, first of all, I'm completely against this hoaxes of early detection. Anyway, early detection just kills you early. It doesn't prevent anything, and it doesn't cure you. There's absolutely no way. It's, It's the opposite. Early detection means early death. They just try to produce customers, to create customers with their early detection hoaxes. You think it's all? You think it's all about the money, Leonard? It's only about the money. There is all, it's only power uh, and population control and uh, the money. That's that's all what it is. 
There is no other reason. Because a cancer patient, cancer is the main um, money maker in the, in the industrial, in the, in the pharmaceutical or medical field. Cancer is their oil. It's oh, the man. oil industry of the medical profession. Billions of dollars. Basically. Every cancer patient statistically brings 400000 to $1.8 million from diagnosis to death. Oh, my God. That it's much? That much. If a regular simple chemotherapy uh, is, is uh, basically $35,000 or something like that, or it might be even more because... Uh, it is so important that, that people see that a doctor, for example, it, it, George, a doctor has the shortest lifespan of all professions, 56 years of age statistically. So a medical doctor statistically only reaches the age of 56 years. Then they have the highest abuse rate of, of drugs and alcohol. Then they have the highest suicide rate. Only dentists are shorter and, and psychiatrists are higher. But do you want to go to somebody that has the shortest lifespan, the highest drug and alcohol abuse rate, and the highest suicide rate to ask them what to do with your health? Just think about it. With your health? Just think about it. That's, That's a good point. It's ridiculous. It's like, like you have an athlete that always comes in last, loses every competition he goes to, and then you go to this athlete and say, how do I win the gold medal at the Olympics? It's like some of the astronauts who are going to the moon would say, how do you feel you're in a, you're in a spacecraft built by the lowest bidder? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. That's true. I've never thought about that. <laughs> this is very interesting. But, but it is, it is really, it is really true that, uh, that people just, if you have 10 plumbers or 10, 10, 10 masons or, or 10 people working for you doing something, how many good ones do you have? The same is true with a doctor. And, uh, the, 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 when, when people, first of all, under, uh, let me let me go back. My system is called instinct-based medicine system because I learned by curing over 35,000 people from so-called terminal diseases. There is nothing as an incurable disease. There are only incurable people, people that are not willing to do whatever it takes to get healthy again and stay healthy. But there is nothing as an incurable disease. It's like AIDS can be cured in a couple of days. We know this today, and then, and, and as well as cancer. It, people can get all this information, but let me say I just got a message from from uh, my webmaster, <laughs> George. You have an enormous amount of listeners. Oh, I bet we're crushing it already, aren't it, we? It's already crushed. It, it crushed actually at uh, uh, two forty nine. The website crashed, but they're working on it. The, the free reports, please, people, hang in. The free, <laughs> free reports will come. And at the end of the show, uh, um, George and I will give you a specific website where you get uh, a value of $2,500 worth for free. This website is specifically set up for George and his listeners, and it will only be up for two days, and we give it to you at the end of the show. But my website, drleonardcoldwell.com, crashed a couple of, of minutes ago. But they're working on it, and they promised me uh, it's, it's going to be... Uh, Has that ever happened before? Never, ever, ever. No. And I'm on, any, on some kind of a radio show once or twice every single day, George, every single day. That's why I, I know you have more listeners and active listeners than, than anybody else. Uh, I, I've been really on, on all radio shows, and, and my, my great friend uh, Jeff Renz has a huge following, and then they go uh, also, but it's not, uh, they don't go all at the same time. Yeah, this is kind of kind of big. Doctor. It's really big. I mean, it's really big, George, and I thank you so much for, for having me on. And well, we want to get the message out. You know, what, the many of the things, and, and we'll get into this, you know, as we talk tonight about some of these uh, recommendations that you would have. And I know you have to temper what you say in terms of, you know, these will help you as opposed to, this is a cure, and you'll beat cancer with it. But, but 